Good morning, 1111. My name is Christian. I'm very glad to lead you all in worship today. Whether you're online or in person, we are very glad to have you today. So if y'all could just stand and we can start some worship together, all right? Why you ever chose me has always been a mystery. All my life I've been told I belong at the end of the line With all the other not quite, with all the never get it right But it turns out they're the ones you were looking for all this time Cause I'm just a nobody, trying to tell everybody All about somebody who saved my soul Ever since you rescued me, you gave my heart a song to sing. I'm living for the world to see, nobody but Jesus. I'm living for the world to see, nobody but Jesus. When Moses had stage fright, and David brought a rock to a sword fight. You picked 12 outsiders, nobody would have chosen, and you changed the world. Well, the moral of the story is Everybody's got a purpose So when I hear that devil start talking to me Saying, who do you think you are? Say, I'm just a nobody Trying to tell everybody All about somebody To save my soul And ever since you rescued me You gave my heart a song to sing I'm living for the world to see Nobody but Jesus I'm living for the world to see Nobody but Jesus So let me go down, down, down in history Yeah, lies another blood But a faithful member of the family And if they all forget my name Well, that's fine with me for the world to see nobody but G one more time so let me go down 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 in history as another bird but faithful member of the family and if they all forget my name well that's fine with me I'm living for the world to see Nobody but Jesus Cause I'm just a nobody Trying to tell everybody All about somebody Who saved my soul Ever since you rescued me Gave my heart a song to sing I'm living for the world to see Nobody but Jesus I'm living for the world to see Nobody but Jesus I'm living for the world to see Nobody but Jesus You can take a seat. Welcome to worship this morning. My name's Hannah. I'm one of the pastors here at St. Paul. We're so glad to have you worshiping with us this morning. And you'll find some connect cards in the seat around you if you are new or if you would like to get more connected with our church. We would love for you to fill that out and turn it in um, at the cart with the treats on it on your way out. We'd love to give you a gift. And we've got lots going on um, at our church right now. I want to let y'all know about. Um, first, tonight we have our normal youth for 7th through 12th graders from 5.30 to 7, and our clubhouse for 4th to 6th graders also at that same time. Uh, tonight there will be dinner, games, a message, and just a great time. We hope that all of our students um, will come on out tonight. And then also for our youth, for grades 7 through 12, we have a winter retreat coming up. That's December 30th through January 2nd. And um, there's only a few more spots left. Um, so if you would like to go, please um, talk with Nathan and get signed up. 
Also coming up um, this spring for our sixth graders and up, we are um, starting confirmation. And this is a time to grow in faith and really claim that faith for yourself. And we're going ahead and starting our registration for that. Um, we've got a retreat um, for that as well coming up in February. So we need you to go ahead and um, register for confirmation. That is confirmation.stpaulos.org. And um, we'll be getting more information out about that. But we'll hope that you, uh, your student will join in on that as well. And then for the last several weeks, we've been announcing our Operation Christmas Child project. Next Sunday is our final Sunday, the due date, November 14th. We have a goal of 100 boxes. So if you have not filled your box, if you have not gotten one, it's not too late. Go ahead and grab one uh, on your way out today. Um, but if you're not able to fill a box, you can sponsor a box. And so for about $25, um, you can sponsor a box or $9. You can sponsor the shipping. You can just go Go to our give.stpaulos.org link and click Operation Christmas Child and um, you'll be able to play a part in this awesome ministry that sends gifts uh, to, to kids all around the world and blesses them um, with the gospel of Jesus. And then we've got a couple events that I want to let y'all know about coming up next Sunday night from 5.30 to 7 at the same time as our student ministries. We have a mental health workshop. All adults are invited to come to this. Um, it'll be in the fellowship hall and we have a guest speaker from Mississippi State coming um, to give this workshop. And this is for people who may be struggling with mental health themselves, but also for uh, people who support the people in their lives um, that may be struggling with mental health. And um, as the holidays are coming up, I know this is something that um, a lot of people struggle with as we're grieving um, the loss of people who aren't at our tables um, during the holidays and other things as well. And um, so we hope that you'll join in on this um, important workshop. There's no need to register. Um, you can mark going on the Facebook group or you can just show up, but we'll have dinner and child care um, provided for that. So hope that you'll join in. And then also coming up on November 17th, that's a Wednesday night, we are having our annual turkey trivia event. Um, this time we're going to be having it at our downtown campus in the Wesson building. This will be at 530. There'll be a great Thanksgiving dinner uh, catered by brooms. We've got a dessert competition and trivia competition. Um, but this whole event is to raise money for The Lord is My Help, um, to give back, and to be able to support those who may be hungry uh, during the holidays. But this will be a great fun event. We hope that you um, will all join us for that. And then also coming up is Advent. Christmas is coming. And every year we um, release a St. Paul Advent devotional. And we need your, your help to write um, a devotion for this. Um, you do not have to have any special talent. Just write something from the heart that you want to share with your church family and email that to Allison um, by November 22nd. And then finally, I want to invite you to worship God through giving your tithes and your offerings. And um, there's some baskets that you can put your offering in on the way out. You can also give at the giving link, give.stpaulos.org. We thank you so much for your generosity, your commitment to supporting St. Paul and its ministries. And last week we had the special um, guest, Reverend Kelly Pope, here with us. And he preached an amazing message reminding us of the importance of giving to God and uh, we had the opportunity to um, put in our pledge cards for 2022 and we still have some of those on the tables on the way out if you are wanting to make a pledge for the coming year you can get one of those on your way out um, and turn that in we would be so grateful well let's pray and we'll continue in worship Dear Lord, we thank you so much that you're here with us this morning. And Lord, we have come here to worship you because you are worthy. God, you are an incredible God who has given us so much. Lord, you've blessed us in so many ways. Uh, but most importantly, you came to this earth and you gave your life for us so that we could be saved, so that we could be forgiven, so that we could be set free. And God, we are so in awe of what you've done for us. God, thank you for calling us, uh, calling us your children. We celebrate, uh, we celebrate that you uh, 
um, are our God, you're our Father, and we worship you uh, this morning. We celebrate all those um, who have impacted our lives, all those who have poured into us and shared um, the good news of Jesus with us. And Lord, we ask that you would empower us to love those around us. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand and we'll continue in worship. I'm going to throw it back real quick to one of my all-time favorite old school like country worship songs. So if you've ever needed a song to move around in church and feel, feel free, uh, let's all do that till our souls are on fire. God, I'm running for your heart. I'm running for your heart. See, I am a soul on fire. Lord, I'm longing for your ways. I'm waiting for the day when I am a soul on fire. See, I am a soul on fire. Oh. God, I'm running for your heart. I'm running for your heart. See, I am a soul on fire. Lord, I'm longing for your ways. I'm waiting for the day when I am a soul on fire. See, I am a soul on fire. Lord, restore the joy I have. I have wonders. Bring me back. In this darkness, bring me through until all I see is you. Come on, God, I'm running for your heart. I'm running for your heart. Till I am a soul on fire. Lord, I'm longing for your ways. I'm waiting for the day when I am a soul on fire. Till I am a soul on fire Lord, let me burn for you again Let me return to you again Lord, let me burn for you again I'm running for your heart Till I am a soul on fire Lord, I'm longing for your ways I'm waiting for the day When I am a soul on fire God, I'm running for your heart I'm running for your heart Till I am a soul on fire Till I am a soul on fire Till I am a soul on fire Bye. All right, we're going to calm it down real quick. Uh, I have a little note that I want to read. Uh, this is my favorite song to sing in church personally, but I want to point out something that's pretty significant about this song. Um, it's called Great Are You, Lord, but I love the fact that if you go through and count how many times it says you and your speaking about God, it says it 27 times. When it says our or me, it only says it 10 times. I think that's very representative of what we're all here for. It's not about us. It's more so about him. So as we go through this song, let's just keep that in mind. It's all about him. It's not about us. In 
our loves So we pour out our praise We pour out our praise It's your prayer in our loves So we pour out our praise to you only Great are you Our love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord, it's your breath in our love. So we pour out our praise, we pour out our praise, it's your breath in our love. So we pour out our praise to you only, it's your breath in our love. So we pour out our praise, we pour out our praise, it's your breath in our love. So we Pour out our praise to you only And all the earth will shout your praise Our hearts will cry these bones will sing Great are you Lord And all the earth will shout your praise Our hearts will cry These bones will sing Great are you
Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Live at 1111. We're so glad that you are here with us this morning. Today is All Saints Day. That is the day that we celebrate those giants of the faith who have gone on before us. And toward the end of the service, we'll have an opportunity to come and light a candle in memory of a giant of the faith, a saint in our life. And even though we hope that the saints beat the Falcons today, that's not what it is about. Um, but I think today on this All Saints Day, um, I want to talk about the impact that people can have on other people. And I think this is important because I look at the world around us and I see a big problem. I see a world that is growing more and more distant from one another. Not in what we know about one another's lives, because we have social media to tell us that, but in how invested we are in each other. Our culture has pushed us to become so invested in our own betterment and our own advancement that we have come to neglect the importance of good, godly relationships. When God created human beings, he did not create us to live in isolation or to only think of ourselves, but he created us for relationship with him and relationship with others. That's why Jesus summarized the whole law of the Old Testament into one command as two parts. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, as well as love your neighbor as yourself. It's a both and thing. If we truly love God, we will love others too. And that means that everything we do as believers should bear in mind other people. We shouldn't just focus on ourselves and our own advancement, but we should focus on other people too. Uh, one of uh, the uh, seminary professors at the seminary I went to has now passed away. His name was Robert Munholland, and he defined spiritual formation in this way. He says that spiritual formation is being formed into the image of Christ for the sake of others. Now, that's biblically based. Formed into Christ's image for the sake of others. And so it's true that, yes, a big part of us growing spiritually will benefit us, but it will also have an impact on the people around us. And so a big problem occurs when we get so focused on our own advancement that we forget that we have a responsibility to other people too. Many of you know that Hannah and I last week went to Bar Harbor, Maine. Shout out to Greg Arnold. But it's a beautiful place. If you've never been, go. I've been to several places, but it is by far the most beautiful. But in that part of the country, if you know anything about it, where the ocean meets land, a lot of that is rocky cliffs. And if there's not the necessary lighting for boats, it is likely that they would run into the land. And so at one point, this was actually a real problem there. And so a small group decided to get together for the purpose of rescuing those who had become shipwrecked. And for many years, they saved hundreds of people's lives because they saw it as their responsibility to save people, to risk their lives for the sake of others. But as time went on, they started to realize that they needed to perfect their efficiency. And so they spent most of their time researching all the best techniques, finding and purchasing all the newest equipment, and learning from all the experts of the day. They simply wanted to be the best group for saving people. But one night, while they were in another meeting about how they could be a better group, a ship ran into the coast. But there was no one left back to save the people who had become shipwrecked. And many people lost their lives. And in this scenario, this rescue group no longer existed for the sake of others, but it had come to exist for the betterment of itself and thus it failed to carry out its whole intended purpose which was to rescue people and the same can happen for us too if we become so consumed with our own betterment and advancement that we neglect other people we are violating our created intended purpose and we neglect other people as disciples, yes, we want to be the best version of ourselves that God created us to be. 
but not simply so that we can be the one getting all the credit, but so that we can have an impact on the people around us. To boil it down to a simple phrase, disciples make disciples. Disciples have an impact on other people. Disciples live lives for the sake of others. And if there's one person in the Bible that demonstrated this almost to perfection, it was the Apostle Paul. If you know Paul's story, Paul was not one of the 12 original disciples of Jesus. In fact, Paul didn't meet Jesus till he encountered him supernaturally on the road to Damascus. Before that encounter with Jesus, Paul was quite the opposite of what a disciple would be. Disciple, he didn't make more disciples. Instead, he sought to persecute and kill other Christians because they were a threat to his world view. But that day when he was encountered by Jesus, it changed him. Paul not only became a believer, but he became an ambassador for Christ. Introducing people all around the world to the saving grace of Jesus and planting many churches around the world. And Paul went on several missionary journeys, but toward the end of his life, he went on his third and final missionary journey. And he knew that this would be his last. He knew that he would ultimately be arrested and put to death. And so on this last missionary journey, he takes the opportunity to equip the church to carry on its ministry after he has gone. And in Acts chapter 20, we come across his powerful last words to the Ephesian elders. And it is truly an elegant speech, but more than an emotional speech that is inspiring, it attests to the life that Paul lived. Paul lived a life of contribution to other people. He always saw his purpose as making a difference for Christ. And what we see in Paul's life is the perfect model for sacrificial service to others. And in a world that is very much geared toward making a name for ourselves, we need to hear Paul's testimony where he lived life for the sake of others. So we're going to read that speech, but before I do that, I want to set the stage for you a little bit. You need to imagine a very emotional scene. If you've ever been on a sports team, you know that there's always that moment before the last game when the best and most liked player gets up to give a speech. And when they speak in, everyone is tuning in, hanging on to every word, and by the end, they're all in tears. That's the situation that we find ourselves in. Paul, one of the greatest disciples to ever live, is equipping, equipping the future church to carry out its ministry. And so here are Paul's last words to the Ephesian elders with a little bit of my own added bit scattered throughout. We're going to start in verse 17. It says, From Miletus, Paul sent a message to Ephesus, asking the elders of the church to meet him. And when he came to him, he said to them, You yourselves know me. You know how I lived among you the entire time from the first day that I set foot in Asia. We've done life together. You've seen me serving the Lord with all humility and with tears, enduring trials that came to me because of the plots of the Jews. Even so, I did not shrink from doing anything helpful for the sake of others, proclaiming the message to you and teaching you publicly and from house to house. There was no place I wouldn't go, no time that I wouldn't take just to make the difference in one other person's life. Ever since the day that I encountered Jesus, I have testified to both Jews and Greeks about repentance toward God and faith toward Jesus Christ. That was and is and will always be my goal to point people to Jesus. And now as a captive of the Spirit, I am on my way to Jerusalem not knowing what will happen to me there. Except that the Holy Spirit testifies to me that in every city, imprisonment and persecutions are awaiting me. And you know what? That's okay. Because I do not count my life as any value to myself. No, it's not about me. If only I finish my course and the ministry that I receive from the Lord Jesus, that is enough. All I want to do with my life is to testify to the good news of God's grace. 
And we'll get more into the speech in a minute, but I want to stop there. Did you catch what Paul just said? He said, I do not count my life as any value to myself. How much do we hear the opposite of that in our culture today? Now, did Paul say, my, wife, my life is worthless, I'm not good for anything, I have no purpose in life? No, that's not what he said. He said, I do not count my life as any value to myself. Basically, I'm not in this for my own selfish gain. I'm not trying to get the biggest following or make the most money or make a name for myself. I just want to point my life to Jesus. I just want to point others to him. That's why I'm in this, for the glory of God. Just a few moments ago, we sang a song where we said, we want the world to see nobody but Jesus, not ourselves, nobody but Jesus. As Reverend Kelly Pope shared last week, hide me behind the cross. We want people to see Jesus. And so that's how Paul lived his life. He testified to the good news of Jesus Christ. So let's get back to the speech. Paul continues. He says, And now I know that none of you among whom I have gone about proclaiming the kingdom will ever see my face again. It's my time to go. Therefore, I declare to you this day that I am not responsible for the blood of any of you. I've done my part. For I did not shrink from declaring to you the whole purpose of God and God alone. But now that I have done my part, it's your turn to take the lead. Keep watch over yourselves and over all the flock, of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers, to shepherd the church of God that he attained with his, the blood of his own son, Jesus. But first, before I hand authority over to you, I need to warn you about something. That after I have gone, savage wolves will come among you, not sparing the flock. In fact, some even from your own group will come distorting the truth in order to entice disciples to follow them, not to follow Jesus. It's a very important distinction. It's a big difference between somebody who is in it for themselves and somebody who is in it for Jesus. People who are in it for themselves are trying to make disciples who look like them. But people who are in it for Jesus try to make disciples who look like Jesus. Our job is to make followers of Jesus, not people who look like us. That is our primary goal. And anything other than that, Paul says, is a false teaching because ultimately we're all called to pick up our cross and follow Jesus. Paul continues, he says, therefore, since false teachers will come up in your midst, be alert, remembering that for three years I did not cease night or day to warn everyone with tears. And now has come the time when I commend you to God and to the message of his grace, not my own, a message that is able to build you up, not tear you down, a message to give you an inheritance among all who are sanctified. But let me just add one more thing. In my life, I coveted no one's money, no one's silver or gold or clothing. I wasn't in it for that. You yourselves know that I worked with my own two hands to support myself and my companions. I love that. Paul says, I'm not in this for just myself. I didn't work diligently just to support me, but I did it to support others too. I always saw my purpose as loving my brother and sister. And Paul ends on this. He says, ultimately, in all this, I have given you an example that by such work, we disciples of Jesus must support the weak. Remembering the words of the Lord Jesus, for he himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. He says it is more blessed to give than to receive. That kind of sums up everything Paul said in this farewell speech. If we simply go through life receiving, expecting people to give us stuff all the time, but never giving in anything in return, it's only to our own detriment. We won't get, out as, get as much out of life if we live that way. But, but if we live life for the sake of other people, 
If we give more than we receive, we will be blessed beyond what we could ever imagine. Not because it'll get us further in life, but because the impact that we will have here on this earth will be for the kingdom of God. And if we truly follow Jesus, that should be our priority number one. We should wake up every day asking ourselves, am I pointing to Jesus, people to Jesus today? One of the biggest impacts that we could ever have is making a difference in other people's lives. Let me give you a scenario to think about in light of this sermon. Imagine you walk out uh, of these doors today after worship and you run into two of our youth here. And maybe you can think of two specific youth. If not, think of two people between the ages 12 and 18. And on the surface, you have a great conversation. They seem totally happy, they're laughing a lot, totally content with their life, and you may even remember back to a time when you felt that way, when you felt like you didn't have a worry in the world. But what if I told you that even though they might seem okay on the outside, there might be something totally different going on on the inside? In fact, I can almost guarantee you that one of two of those teens is really struggling on the inside. And that's because Barna Research Group did research recently that found this past year that 44% of American teenagers would attest to feeling lonely a lot of the time. So that again, 44% of American teenagers would attest to feeling lonely a lot of the time. And I'm sure that concerns you, but hear me out, I'm not trying to make you worry about your teen's life. However, I do want you to consider today, what are you doing to make a difference in other people's lives? Because it's not just our teens, it's people of all ages. It's our mother, our father. It's our husband, our wife. It's our brother, our sister. It's our best friend. Or maybe even it's ourself. What are we doing to address the lack of relationship in our culture today? God said that we were created for relationship, to love him and to love our neighbors. We need to be a church that is willing to step out in love, to go beyond surface value and actually build relationships with other people so they can come to know the loving, saving grace of Jesus. Paul lived his life for the sake of others, even being executed by the end of his life. He gave everything he had because he wanted other people to know Jesus. And I believe God is calling us to do the same. So today we're going to have two opportunities to respond to the message. First we're going to have communion and then at the end of the service we're going to have an opportunity to light a candle in honor of a saint that has gone on to glory. And we're going to remember their life and we're also going to pray that God will do the same work in ours as well. But first, we're going to come to the table for communion. Communion is such a beautiful thing because we come around the table of Jesus Christ and he invites all those who love him, who repent of their sin and seek to live at peace with one another. And we need to remember that. We need to remember as we come together as brothers and sisters that we're coming as broken people in need of God's grace. And he meets us right there, offers us forgiveness. All we have to do is confess our sin and believe that he will forgive them. And so before we come to the table today, let's take a moment to silently confess our sins before God. Take that moment now. Lord, thank you for inviting us to your table today. Help us to live our lives for the sake of others, for the sake of the gospel. Help us to build good, godly relationships that mean something, that are going to make us closer to the kingdom of God, not bring us away. Lord, as we come to the table today, we remember the sacrifice that you made so that we can come to the table so that we can be in the presence of God. We thank you for making a way for us. 
Lord, we ask that you would forgive us of our sins. In Jesus' name, amen. Hear the good news. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That means that we are forgiven. And the night before Jesus was betrayed, he sat at a table with his disciples. He took some bread, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples and he said, take, eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, he took a cup, gave thanks to God, gave it to his disciples and said, this is the blood of my new covenant poured out for you and for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so today, as we come to the table, we remember what Christ has done for us that he made a way for us to sit at his heavenly table. It's the best news we could hear. Would you pray with me? God, would you pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and juice. Make them be the body and blood of Christ for us so that we can be the body of Christ in this world for the sake of others. Help us to be your willing vessels that will spread your good news. And as a church family, we come together and we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Remember, this is Christ's table. He invites all those who are willing. Take and eat as you're ready. I'll give a couple moments for you to do that. And then we'll transition to our All Saints moment. Well, after Paul gave his speech to the Ephesian elders, they had a very emotional goodbye. In Acts chapter 20, verse 36, it says this. When Paul had finished speaking, he knelt down with them all and prayed. There was much weeping among them all. They embraced Paul and kissed him, grieving especially because of what he had said, that they would not see him again. Then they brought him to the ship. And that's how Paul said goodbye to those people that he made an impact in their lives. And today on All Saints Sunday, we remember those in our church family and also those outside our church family, those saints of the faith that lived their life for the glory of God, that lived their life for the sake of others. And when we remember their lives, that's what we remember about them. We remember the impact that they made on us. We remember that they put God first and others before themselves. And so during this last song, you're going to be invited to come light a candle in honor of a loved saint in your life. Light that candle and remember and honor what they have done in their lives. But also I want you to say a prayer. When you light that candle, I want you to say, do it again, God. I want to be your vessel that lives lives for the sake of others. Help me to make an impact for your name on this earth. So we're going to pray. We're going to move into the time of that. Let's pray. <clears throat> Dear Lord, I just want to thank you for the lives of those saints in our life. Lord, we want to thank you that they knew you. That they encountered you. And Lord, thank you that they made an impact on our lives. That they helped usher us closer to you. That they lived for the gospel. We praise you for that. And Lord, we don't just ask a thanksgiving over them. 
But we ask you to do the same work in our life. Help us to see beyond ourselves and make an impact in the people around us. Help us not to lose sight of what your intended purpose for us was, which was to love you as well as love our neighbor. Help us to keep that first. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. There's lighters up here if you want to come light a candle. And then we'll have a benediction afterwards. So go ahead. Are you hurting or broken within? Overwhelmed by the weight of the sin? Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. to the altar the Father's arms are open wide forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ Behind your regrets and mistakes Come today, there's no reason to wait Jesus is calling Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy From the ashes a new life is born Jesus is calling to the altar the father's arms are open wide forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of jesus christ oh come to the altar the father's arms are open wide forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, what a Savior! Isn't He wonderful? Sing hallelujah. Oh, God.
come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was but me. The precious blood of Jesus Christ. Bury cross as you wait for the crown Tell the world of the treasure you found well, We praise God for each candle that was lit today. Thankful what He has done in their life and thankful for what they did in our life. And on the middle altar here we lit 19 candles in honor of the 19 pe- members of our church people who are very involved here uh, who passed away. And I want to read those names for us uh, before we go. Marjorie Marge Abel. Howard Roland Barnett. Angela Chester Bumgarden. James Anthony Bellman. Laura Benazou. Chuck Sedina, Dr. David Wilson Cook, Alan Truman Curry, Iva Joyce Randall Edwards, John Alex Johnny Harris, David Paul Hawkins, June Holt, W. Bradford Brad Lemon, Janet Jan McCarthy, Evelyn Merritt, Art Prince, Parmelia Violet Thornton, John Kenneth Ken Vaughn Sr., and John H. Young Jr., thankful for those saints who have gone before us. Go in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. See you next week.